Hey everyone, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to be looking at the Dope Sheet viewport to work with multiple channels of keyframes at once. If you haven't watched my video on the timeline viewport and keyframing, you might want to do that. So if we change the timeline view to the Dope Sheet view, and drag out the left hand panel, we'll see an entry called Summary. Let's go ahead and duplicate our default cube. And now we're going to add some keyframes for both. At first glance, the dope sheet seems a lot like the timeline. But let's expand the summary button. But let's expand the summary. Under the summary, we see our currently selected object with a second layer under that called Actions, which we're not gonna cover in this video. Then under that is our Object Transformations. If we expand the Object Transformations, we see the individual channels of the XYZ keyframes. Now, clicking on a given layer of the keyframe hierarchy, now clicking on a given layer of this hierarchy will select the keyframes that are under it and above it, but not its siblings. So for instance, Clicking on a keyframe at the cube level selects the cube's parents and all of the keyframes underneath the cube. However, if I just select the X location, it will select all of its parents, but none of its siblings. This means we can offset, scale, or delete just one of these channels. For instance, we can make this X channel move faster by moving its keyframe to the left but you'll see that this made a bunch more dots on the dope sheet. So something to understand right away is how keyframes roll up in the dope sheet. The summary line shows every frame with a keyframe. The object level shows every frame with a keyframe for that object. The same goes for actions, and then the transform group shows a keyframe for all of the transform channels, but the individual channels will just show the keyframes for themselves. Let's add a keyframe that's outside of the transform keyframes. So for instance, we could go to the material for this object and keyframe its base color. We could then move, change the color, and keyframe that. So this keyframe for the base color is showing up here under the shader node tree, the cube, and the summary, but not for the action or the object transforms. One of the things the dope sheet allows us to do is to select multiple objects. Now we will see all of the keyframes for all of the selected objects. You'll notice that the summary line is actually showing a dot for every keyframe for every selected object. Let's go ahead and select just one of these. And now we'll click and drag to box select some keyframes. We can duplicate keyframes by pressing Shift D. and then we click to confirm the location we want them to land. You'll notice for this keyframe, a band has been created between the two keyframes. This band indicates that the two adjacent keyframes share the same value. So if I were to go in between them and create a new keyframe with a different value, that band gets broken. This indicates that all three of these now have different values. Another way to duplicate keyframes is with Control C and Control V, just like cut and paste. So I can select my keyframes, hit Control C, move my playhead to a new location, and press Control V. Looking at our channel names in the left-hand panel, we see that there's a couple of icons next to each one. The first one is related to F-curve modifiers. We're going to cover F-curve modifiers in a different video when we cover the graph editor. Just know that this icon enables or disables F-curve modifiers on that channel. The checkbox is a mute button for this channel. Turning it off will mean that that channel will act as if it has no keyframes. Turning it back on will re-enable any keyframes for that channel. And then finally, the lock icon will prevent any changes from happening on that channel. You can filter channels by name in the search bar at the top left menu. Pressing the dual arrow button will invert that search. The view menu has several helpful tools. The show curve extremes option 
changes the icons on your keyframes to show where the values change direction. This way you can very quickly see where it reaches its maximum and minimum values. The Set Preview Range option, which can also be enabled by pressing the P key, will let you choose a range for previewing your animation. This is just like the stopwatch icon in the timeline. This sets a temporary playback range so that you can preview a smaller section of your animation. Hitting Alt P will clear that. There's another option called Auto Set Preview Range. This just uses the current object and sets the preview range to its beginning and ending keyframes. There's a marker menu that can be used just like the Timelines marker menu. The Channel menu contains options for grouping and ungrouping channels if you need more organization in your sidebar. As well, there's a settings for an extrapolation mode. We'll look into extrapolation modes in our video on the graph editor. In the same way, the settings under the key menu for interpolation mode and easing mode will be covered in that same video. Along the top menu, there are also some visibility icons. Only show selected will make it so that only selected objects with keyframes will show up. If you uncheck this, every object in your scene with a keyframe will show all the time. The next icon will allow hidden items to also show up in the dope sheet. So turning only selected off and show hidden on means that all items with keyframes, whether they're hidden or not, will be shown in the dope sheet. If these options aren't enough for you, the filter popover provides a whole list of ways you can filter out the objects in the dope sheet. The auto snap option will change how moving keyframes around snap to the time grid. So if you want to snap to the nearest second, the nearest frame, or the nearest marker, you can do that using this menu. Lastly, the proportional editing option will let you grab nearby unselected keyframes in the same channel and move them proportionally to one another. For instance, with proportional editing on, if I were to grab this keyframe, if I roll my mouse wheel down, this circle will increase size. Now any keyframe in this channel within the radius of this circle will also be affected, but proportionally. I can continue doing this until I have all the keyframes moving that I'd like. So now you should have a basic understanding of what you're seeing in the dope sheet. In the next video, we'll talk about the graph editor. This is where we'll finally get detailed control over our movement. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. You can also follow me on Twitter at Johnny Gizmo. As always, thanks for taking time out of your day to watch my video. I hope it inspired you to do something awesome. I'll see you next time.